Hey guys, in this tutorial I will talk about how to seamlessly wrap procedural textures around curve objects. So in this case here I have a spiral curve and you can see that my texture here shows no seams. It works with most procedural textures in Blender. So for example if I now take this Voronoi noise here, you can see that it yeah, seamlessly wraps around this curve. Here's another example. This is a very simple tree I've made and if I plug this into my setup here it also works so now I just need to adjust some parameters and yeah you can imagine that it is uh, really really useful for all kinds of different stuff so yeah let's start with the setup Okay, so here is a very basic setup. I use a spiral in combination with a curve to mesh node and a curve circle for the profile. And then I set the material. And the material is just a simple noise texture that I've mapped with the object coordinates onto my object. And now I want to wrap this texture around my object. So you can see I can scale and stretch the texture here but it is not possible with this setup to really wrap it around my object. So what I really need is to create uh, some texture coordinates. And this is kind of straightforward. We really need to capture the factor of both of these curves and store it in a vector, which we then use for the vector input for the noise texture. So yeah, let's do this. The first thing we want to do is to capture an attribute for both curves. And we want to capture the spline parameter factor. So in this case, I plug the factor in here. And I also do the same here at the top. And now in this geometry, I want to store this vector. So store named attribute, set it to vector, and I think in 3.5 there is a new mode to this to uh, specifically store vector 2s, but it works with vector 3 too. So I take a combine x, y, and z node. And for the x value, I take this. And for the y value, I take this. And now I can call this, for example, UVs. And in my shader node editor, I take an attribute. I type in here also UVs. And if I now have a look at this, you can see that it kind of works but there is a little problem here at the edge and this can be solved first by simply setting this to face corner and this is really important for UVs to properly work. Still there is a problem and this is because the circle here is closed and we need it to split in some point and we could split this curve up here but we also could simply work with an arc. So let me show you what I mean. This is the arc and we close it so it is not merged here at this point. Then I increase the resolution to 32 like the circle. And now I can use this instead of the circle. If I now have a look at this, you can see the nice sharp corner we need for the unwrapping. But now there is a little problem and we can see it here. And this is that the shading is not smooth anymore. So to solve this, you can simply take a merge node and now this problem is solved. And now to demonstrate how important it is to set this to face corner, if I switch this to point, you can see that it gets messed up here. So back to face corner and it works. The UV attribute we've created is similar to what an uh, unwrapped cylinder like this would look like. 
So independent of the height of the cylinder, it still is mapped in a one by one square. And this is because we using the factor and the curve factor goes from zero to one for both curves. And we can make use of this with a hack to turn Blender's textures into tileable textures. So by default, Blender's textures are not tileable, sadly, but there is a little hack. It's not perfect by any means, but it works for many cases. So yeah, let me show you how to do this. The first thing we need to do is to take a separate X, Y, and Z node and a combine X, Y, Z node. And now I take a sign function and also a cosine function. And now I send the X to the sine and to the cosine function and in the combine X, Y, and Z node, I use the sine for the X and the cosine for the Y input. And then I do the same for the Y. So send it to the sine and to the cosine. And here I send it to the Z output. And now I need a 4D texture and luckily Planner has 4D textures. So I can set this to 4D. I use this vector three for the vector input and the fourth component for the W input. And now it still doesn't work. The important thing now is to create a vector math fraction node and scale the result by two pi or simply tau. And now you can see that the texture shows no seams. This here is the setup to make the texture tileable. So I can now scale it. And to stretch the texture, I can simply take a vector math multiply node. I only need the first two components and I can then change the X value to stretch it. But it is important to leave the Y value alone because it is really important that the Y component of the coordinate is in a range of zero to one. So yeah, you can stretch it here and adjust the scaling here. Now the setup is all nice and cool, but actually we don't need the X component to get tiled because this is the factor of this curve here. And so we can actually optimize it a little bit. So we can simply set this texture back to 3D. And instead of manipulating our X coordinate, we can delete these two plug this into the X component, then the sine into the Y and the cosine into the Z component. And now I have to make this operation on my Y component only. So I can delete this these two. Then I take a fraction math node and a multiply math node, multiply this by tau. And now it should work a little bit nicer because now the X component shows no tiling. I can scale it up a little bit. And here on the X component, I still can make the texture stretch and squash. So yeah, that's really the whole setup. And we can test it by simply take a Voronoi Plug it this in here. For example, take the color output. And now we have nicely wrapped seamless textures. So yeah, that's the whole setup. I hope it is useful for you. And see you next time.